Okay. Got it. Um, so first of all, we'll just go through these really quick, just give you a brief overview um, of what we discussed last time, the alternative. So here's alternative one. Um, we talked about last time, the goal here is to improve functionality and safety and really compliance of trail users as they interact and, and traverse this intersection and interact with vehicles. The city and MAG have done some studies on compliance at this intersection and found that there was a lot of trail users that cross this intersection uh, against the light, against traffic laws, and the way that, that they can safely cross this intersection. So that was the goal is to improve safety and compliance here. So this first alternative here um, is going to keep the intersection somewhat the same, but we would do um, the separated or dual pedestrian ramps uh, at each intersection so that it directs people more to where they need to cross the crosswalk is that each crosswalk's pulled back a little bit farther from the intersection to where it is now. Right now we have apex crossings and then we can put some landscaping between those ramps to keep trail users and pedestrians uh, from crossing inappropriately, like diagonally. So just try and improve compliance here and do um, some bulb outs here. This alternative one does take out the northbound to eastbound right turn lane. Um, our traffic analysis and council studies show that that doesn't make a significant change to the functionality of the intersection. It still works uh, just fine. Um, the next alternative is similar to this one. Um, same thing, dual pedestrian ramps. But this one eliminates all the right turn, dedicated right turn lanes. Part of the reason we did that is to narrow up the crossing distance so pedestrians as they cross the street. They just need to cross the actual travel lanes and turn lanes and not shoulder so it uh, minimizes the amount of time that pedestrians are in the street. Um, and like I said, we did do traffic counts and traffic analysis of the existing intersection and in, in these to um, look at the color level of service, how well the, the intersection functions and uh, it still functions at a high level of service. Uh, the next option, third option number three that we looked at, we had everyone score, um, shows is essentially the same as alternative number one with the dual pedestrian ramps, but to put an amenity in the southwest corner, uh, something that attracts people to that corner. So they want to go there, whether it be a shelter, a restroom, um, a bike repair station, a bench, something that encourages people to cross at this point. And this is one that some questions came up about. This could probably be a, a included with any other option that doesn't impact this corner. So, who owns that corner? Uh, this, the city. Is the city owned? Yeah. It's three, uh, four is um, adjusting the alignment of the trail to approximately 1640 north, where the trail. Users would cross 400 east at that point with a hawk signal to control that crossing. And then trail users would come along the east side of 400 east, cross 1600 north, and then get back on the trail uh, with directional crosswalks. Uh, number five um, is, this is like getting in the way. <laughs> there we go. So the five it is just, it's a right turn bypass uh, the, the dual pedestrian ramps to separate the uh, this right turn movement from uh, the, the trail crossing to eliminate that, get that conflict point. Alternative six, this looks at realigning the trail west to approximately 50 east at the edge of the west edge of the undeveloped properties, at which point it crosses 1600 north with a hawk signal so that uh, can control and stop traffic for pedestrians to cross. And then I would come along the uh, south side of 1600 north to the intersection and then cross. And um, this one did have a little bit of impact to the right of way and fences here. Um, that's something 
we can look into more if we decide that's an alternative what we want to continue looking at. Um, alternative six, I think, would also need to remove the trail or at least um, do something to direct trail users to use this and not continue to use um, this area here, which yeah, that would continue to be at, huh? um, Yeah, that, that would still need to continue to be an access for the for our canal pipeline. But and there have, probably still need to be pedestrian access at the signal too, yeah. right? Just typical pedestrian users, not yeah. trail users, but pedestrians. Yep, that, yep, that's exactly right. The uh, six uh, alternative seven is um, similar to six, where we realign the trail to approximately three fifty east. But at this point, we do a grade separated crossing. And so this concept showed more of a well known pass. Um, and then this loop would be just as the trail climbs back up to grade here at the street, we'd need to bring a loop here and then come along the south side of 1600 north. Uh, this does impact right of way here at this point. So that's something that we evaluated. Um, it would come, come across in the cost of the alternative. Uh, oh, and uh, Alternative 7 does have uh, a sidewalk connection to the sidewalk on the north side so that the trail user didn't want to go under the street. They just wanted to stay on the north side. They could use the sidewalk and come to the sidewalk on the north side. Alternative 8. This is a an underpass under the intersection. This concept shows kind of two uh, crossing structures, one under 1600 north, a little daylight area right here uh, with some retaining walls, another crossing structure in the northeast, and then climbing back up to the trail. So this is um, probably one of the, well, the most expensive option, but uh, completely removes that conflict trail users from the road. So that's alternative eight. Um, said it would be going under, so you know there would be um, impacts to the area as it climbs back up at the tr existing trail. Do you need to keep in mind that the existing 72 inch culvert for the Murdoch Canal goes right pretty much under the trail. So that's something we need to be cognizant of is as we evaluate this alternative. So there be a, like our previous option on the north side where there's a sidewalk that would connect that grade. Uh, it's a, still an option for trail users to disembark the trail yeah. at an intersection. I think that would be, yeah, we need to include something like that here. Yes, that's something that we need to, need to make sure we provide it so that no, it's like at a feast. You don't do it right there, but so you have to go way back here and then walk up. Yeah, so it's have, not really convenient, but it's possible. Yeah. Keep in mind, these are the concepts that we came up with as we move forward and, and refine this. We'll look at these in more detail at feasibility and cost of things. But, um, but that's, that's the great separated crossing alternative nine. This is a roundabout. So the city initially uh, submitted the concept report funding application to MAG for a roundabout to try and address the issues. And so this is this is the alternative of a roundabout, um, just standard type roundabouts with uh, high visibility crosswalks for the trail. We need to realign the trail a little bit so it comes in at the location where crosswalks typically are at roundabouts. Um, this one does have impacts to um, the properties in the corner. There's a lot of utilities in the Northwest corner that it would impact. Um, and then there'd be impacts to this property here in the Southeast corner. But, uh, one nice thing is that the city does have a lot of the right of way already in the Southwest corner. So not as much right of way would be needed there. There is right of way that would be needed with this alternative. And, North, east. Sorry, the southeast. Yes. There's two homes there. Yeah, there are. There's one right here, and then there's one here. So the, the one on the corner would most likely be 
the main impacts we could probably tie in before we got to the other home. What's that sharp corner on the northeast? I mean, that's a pretty sharp corner for a yeah. roundabout. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so this is concept. This may need to be widened out a little bit. That is a, kind of a sharp turn there. I think we were in the concept, we were trying to minimize impacts here, but mm -hmm. it's something we, as the, this alternative progresses, we need to look at that a little bit more closely. Mm -hmm. I assume at the meeting when I missed, it was discussed, it's probably the most dangerous um, <laughs> solution <laughs> to the problem. problem. The one's still coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, this one didn't score very high, and I'll show you the scores here, but yeah, this one, yeah, uh, yeah the, I mean, yeah. They, yeah, there, there is, they are, they're not as dangerous as you think, but yeah, compared to some of the other options. Yeah, it's not as it's not as safe as the other options. Yeah. Traffic signal stops traffic for pedestrian around about the You're just continually having cars. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah, so here if, uh, <clears throat> this this one is very interesting. We've got our creative hats on and put together together. This is an enhanced roundabout. Um, this is kind of unique and innovative, but it would uh, put the crossing through the center of the roundabout, which would require hawk signals. So when a pedestrian or a trail user wants to cross there, they would have to hit the button and traffic in the roundabout would have to stop while they cross. So, so it's innovative, but... Um, how how well do cars comply with those? In a roundabout? In anywhere. The uh, hawk? Hawk? In a roundabout? Hawks in a roundabout. Hawks I believe they, are, they work pretty well. Um, are there hawk, hawk signals in the city that... Yeah, they, there's pretty good compliance with them. I mean, I will say, I think we did have one crossing guard get hit in the hawk up on 8th East and 10th North, I think. But for the most part, they are there is pretty high compliance with a hawk signal. Um, I don't think there's anything that's 100% compliant unless you have bollards that shoot up and can restrict cars from going through it, right? I mean, there's just only so much that, that we can do, but it is pretty high compliance having it signalized. Yeah. yeah and with the hog signal, it's not just the flashes, the flashes in the post yellow and red, so a red light. And like, you know, there's the RFBs, rectangular rapid flashing beacons, or overhead flashing beacons that are similar. You know, but they just flash until the pedestrians across. It's more of a yield type situation, but yeah. That okay. might work in a roundabout with low usage. You know, yes. this one is going to be busy. It's going to yeah. bounce up yeah. there. So that, that's our innovative one. <laughs> <laughs> um, 11. This is. Uh, just shifting the, the trail crossing to about 400 east to the intersection here at Quail Road, and then taking the trail usually along the north side of 1600 north to cross fourth east. So it's similar to the one, you know, grade separated or, or at grade. Now, this one would have a hawk signal as well. Does that take into consideration all the people who are not on the trail, all the school kids, all the they go down to the high school. They're still going to need to cross. Yeah, they'll still need to cross. Yeah, this option, they would have to cross um, a couple times, come up to the street and then kids aren't cross. Right. So, yeah, that's <laughs> they'll. I watch those high school kids. They're gonna, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a free for all. Yeah, so that's probably one of the one thing that might be difficult on this one. But yeah, they'd still they'd have to. Follow the new route up here, and then you know cross to go. So the main focus is with, with the trail. That's where I think most of the users are. So minimizing the, the crossings of trail users. And then the twelfth alternative here is a pedestrian scramble. Um, this is not as not as expensive, but it does allow all movement for pedestrians diagonal. Um, this does need a dedicated crossing phase, so uh, 
it all lanes have to stop when this is in place. Uh, and these, these typical typically work in like dense urban areas, downtown areas where there's lots of cars and pedestrians. Um, and there's several successful examples in, this area, in those type of areas. So in here, there's there's a lot of cars and pedestrians. But I'm not sure how well it would work, but, but it, it would work. We just have to make sure we got signal phases in that. Well, that's how the bikes go anyway. Yeah. So we're just kind of changing <laughs> changing not. crossings to match what they're doing now. So yeah. So those are those are the alternatives. So those are the 12 we we looked at and we've asked you to score. Before I go on to the score, are there any questions so far on the alternatives that we looked at? We can come back to these if you'd like. Um, but in the one sort of criteria that we look at, just a re just, uh, review of that as well. We talked about this in the last meeting that we looked at six evaluation criteria. And yes, you did each of you to score um, each of the alternatives with these criteria. The first one is roadway safety, and that's just focusing on vehicular safety, how these intersections work with vehicle safety. Uh, to look at the trail user safety um, as the how safe is it for pedestrians and cyclists to travel through the intersection. Uh, the third, all, third criteria was cost. So we did ask you to score that the last meeting. I did say we are doing cost estimates and we do those cost estimates to actually assign the scores for cost. So we've completed that. So I'll report on that tonight and let you know how those scores uh, came out with our concept cost estimates. The fourth was the vehicle level of service. So with each alternative, how long it's going to take for the vehicles to get through the intersection and how effectively that will work. And then the trail level of service and how convenient is this alternative for trail users to traverse through the intersection. And then the sixth criteria was compliance. How likely are the trail users, pedestrians, and cyclists, those to actually follow the path that we've laid out. So with that, um, give you a peek at our cost estimates. So we went through um, and did our engineers did some concept cost estimates. They uh, looked at each of the alternatives and looked at what the construction cost uh, would be best based on their best opinion. Um, so for alternative one, that's just over a million dollars is what we're estimating. And keep in mind, these are concept cost estimates, um, but I think these put us in the ballpark. And what's important is that we're looking at cost relative to the other alternatives as well, because we're really trying to get a score. But these are in the ballpark of, of costs. Um, alternative two, which is similar to alternative one, with uh, but alternative two takes out all the right turn lanes. That's 1.1 million. Uh, the amenity that is so that's one that it's pretty much um, the same cost as the alternatives one and two, but with the cost of the amenity. So we just estimated what that could be. Uh, so there's uh, fifty to hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars in there uh, for an amenity. Uh, realigning the intersection to sixteen hundred north, one point seven million. Uh, right turn bypass alternative five is 1.2 over 1.2 million. Um, the Hawks realigning the trail to 350 east with the Hawk signal that's just over 2 million. Um, a gray separated crossing at 350 east that gets expensive. That's seven and a half million is what we're estimating with the gray separated crossing. Alternative eight, which is uh, Great separated crossing at the at the intersection, a little over eight million is our concept estimate here. These are our two most expensive options. Great when you go great separated, it gets very expensive. Yeah. Um, the uh, alter the uh, roundabout um, with uh, based on what we the city initially uh, did a concept. As a report for was like 4.3 million is what we're estimating the roundabout is now. With the Hawk in it, the, the 
innovative roundabout. That's over 4.4 million. Um, realigning the trail to 450 east with the Hawk signal. That's a little over 2 million. So I think both of those where we 350 east and 400 east with Hawk signals, they're pretty darn close, almost the same price. Um, and the pedestrian scramble, which is the most cost effective, is 417,000 for the estimated So that gives you the ballpark range of where we think these costs could come in. We then went through and did a weighted value um, of costs, basically uh, created a range from what the most expensive option is to the least expensive option and gave them a weighting value or a score. Um, a, a score of five is the best. That means that it falls within the range of lowest cost, most cost effective. And a score of one means that's very that's the most expensive. So we just bring them and score them based on how many weight them. Basically, yeah. So basically just for like zero to um let's see, 417,000 was the lowest cost. Uh, eight million was the highest cost. We just basically broke that up into segments, five segments okay. in those cost ranges. Did you just divide the low one or whatever one by the highest and you just go up percentage? Pretty much, yeah. And we did this two ways. So Sam Powell, our, our design engineer, he he did it this way, and then I did an independent review, kind of did a a different different but similar way, and I came up with the same scores he did. So we had two independent scores for that. So yeah. Um, the money flows is going to come from that. Yeah, and we have, we have the, the, I mean, according to this, we could do the directional crosswalks with the amenity is how much money we have, about 1.2 million. So what I would have to do is whichever all, all alternative we choose, likely it's going to be, I think, something more than that. And it might not, but if we need additional dollars, then I would go and ask Mag for I'd have to go to Meg and do a tip modification, and then we, the city, would just have to come up with our additional six point seven percent match. So we have enough money. Given us one point two, that's the budget. Yeah, that's what the current is now. Yeah. But they also are aware that this could go up and is likely to go up. Would be the thing. Could possibly yes, depending on which which alternative is chosen here. Yeah. What was the plan for the one point two? A roundabout. But that was also back in oh, 2018. Yeah. Yeah. 2018, yeah. 2017, when we did the concept plan and yeah, costs, property costs, costs, construction costs were considerably less. Yeah. It's kind of crazy right now with some of the cost estimates we've done to see how much material prices have gone up. It's, it's surprising. Yeah. So we use those scores. So we did want to go over the weighting. So we had everybody give a score for each of these criteria, or you know, one through five. We we defined that, and then we weighted the scores. This is how the team. So. City staff and JDB team, we, uh, as we put this together, we discussed this and we came up with weighting of how we'd weight the scoring. So for example, roadway safety, the scores that everybody gave them, that was the scores just multiplied by one. The, the trail user safety scores from our team was multiplied by three and so on and so forth. So I know ours, you know, cost, trail user safety three, that's, that's important, you know, cost was, a big deal because we, um, you know, there, there's limited budget. Compliance is really kind of tied to safety, but compliance is really what we're trying to affect here. So that had got the highest score. So that's how we weighted our scoring, and that affected how scores came out and were ranked. Um, and I'm saying, I handed out this other sheet to you because this might be a little bit hard to see. I wasn't sure how it would show up on the TV, but um, using our our weighting um, with all of our scores. So the scores that I'm showing here in the ranking, that's based, that's with your scores. So with 
the JV team scores and city staff scores. So we just put them all together. And then we just use the different weightings to see how it ranked out. So this is um, using the weighting that our team had come up with. So the number one option is the great separated crossing at uh, the intersection, 4th East and 1600 North. Um, you'll probably see on there already, spoiler alert, that's the number one alternative with um, the weighting that the TAC came up with as well. So that's been con pretty consistent across the board. Um, second option would be the directional crosswalks where all the right turn lanes are eliminated and put the barriers to separate the directions and then do some trail realignments. So that was alternative two. Um, three is the amenity in the southwest corner that ranked pretty high as well. That was ranked three. Um, but this is one as well that it can be incorporated into some of the other options. Like for example, um, the alternative number two could incorporate alternative number three pretty easily, very easily. Our uh, fourth ranked uh, um, alternative was to move the trail to 350 East and use a hawk signal based on the weighting that our consultant team and city staff came up with. And five was realigning it to 450 East with a hawk signal. Six was uh, some of the directional crosswalks, but only eliminating the northbound right turn lane. Um, and seventh was uh, realigning it to trail to 1640 North, taking it to the north with a hawk signal. Uh, the pedestrian scramble was ranked eighth. Uh, three, the grade separated crossing at 350 East came in at nine. The right turn bypass uh, with directional ped ramps was 10. And then the two roundabouts were the last two. <laughs> the enhanced roundabout actually beat out the, the standard roundabout. So that's how our scores came out. Um, so I'm kind of surprised the scramble went so low or so far down. Yeah. Um that's based this on this is everybody. This is this is all on you guys and, and us. Everybody scores okay. with so our score is because I was gonna say, call out these people here who I'll vote with me pretty far, but it's everybody. <laughs> it, this is everybody. This is all of our heads we put on Uh I like the ones on the bottom. Why not? <laughs> And I think it's interesting. I, I think it's So the reason that I don't like the roundabouts for that intersection, I live right by the one by Hobby mm -hmm. yeah. And more than one time, there's been real close issues with pedestrians and trying to get across there. They're close enough to the circle that if people stop for the pedestrian, which they need to do, then it backs up the circle and people who are trying to make the right turn coming out of the circle, they're looking to make sure nobody's crossing in front of them, the cars in front of them stop. And that's my experience. So I like, if the roundabout's there, I like the sidewalks further, or the crosswalks further away from the, the roundabout itself. Yeah. And this intersection services a lot of children, you know, high schoolers, gray schoolers, and they just don't look. And that's why I'm saying you can cross right in the middle, in face. Yeah. With the signal, how do you miss that? You can't miss that. Yeah. See, see one, right? I'm getting a little No, I'm getting a little They're looking for cars. They're not. They're not looking. Yeah, that's true. And when they're not looking for you, and I think on Saturday is when you have a lot of trail use. That it would well, I mean, uh, I mean, it's yeah, not that's that's the common small classes. I just told how many times I go through there too, but I wasn't good at the years. And then maybe twice. Yeah, I cross that. I go by every day. Yeah, and I nearly lost my last week. A lot of stuff. And so it's like turners. It's staff itching in the sun. Oh. And mother's on the phone. She's in the trash. Kids in the minivan up there. Yeah, I nearly put the flag at one point. <laughs> I guess I tell she can do that. Right? Wow. I rang them. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is That's scary. scary. Yeah. I don't get across the north south. Let me do it anymore. I go to the south. 
Yeah, I think I think in your email you pointed that out. The sun yes, in their eyes. I did. Now it gets terrifying. That it, when I see somebody trying to cross there, I think, look in their eyes. If they don't see you, if they don't wave at you, don't go because of it. it's not good. Yeah, that's the wise thing to do. The kids don't know that. Yeah. So on the, the grade separation, we talked about last time the fact that the, the culvert is there and the alignment of the subterranean separation, we have to jog out and then jog back, uh -huh. uh, which creates a safety issue. I mean, the ability to see through and pull it off. Is there an ability to straighten that enough to make it so you can, you can see from end to end on that? That would be challenging. I did talk to our designers about that. Um, because of where the, uh, the Murdoch Canal covert is. It's the right? pumping station there. Yeah, the, yeah there, there's a valve box there. there. It's a 70, I think it's a 72 inch pipe. It's huge. It's going right there. So we've got to maintain clearance from that. So that's something if we decide to move this one forward, part of our scope of work is to then do a little bit more detailed design and look at it a little more closer and see if we can straighten that out. That would be part of what we do. I'm not sure how great we can get it. But. I, think, so, I, had, um, I hadn't realized that there was a, on that one, that, that there was a, what did you call it, a peekaboo or a whatever. An open space. So that, um, yeah, right there. I had envisioned it being a continuous thing, but it, so that that feels considerably safer if you have visibility yeah. right there. But yeah. it's still below You're the safe the the Yeah. So you don't necessarily see from end to end between the two tunnels, but under in each segment of the tunnel, you can see the mm -hmm. exact end of that segment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. feels yeah. safer yeah. than I have considered. Well, I can straighten that out just in my picture. Is it not? <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to take it over to the engineers and straighten them out. I mean, I appreciate the focus on the defense option, but I, I didn't understand that before. I, I mean, that. if you were to move either one of these hands, the south end of the market, a little bit to the west, it would help. But again, you get three yeah. moments, you get design constraints, you, you know. You're still in Murdoch. Another wild hair idea that just came to me before if you cross 400 East right there in a tunnel, and then instead of continuing into the tunnel, you made a left turn coming up the grade, and then did the other key in the tunnel under 350 E. So you have to. <laughs> well, that's my thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, far, far off. I know you, you got to do it twice. Yeah, yeah, twice. We got to do it twice here anyway. There's a crossing under 1600. Maybe it's not that much because you're essentially saying this crossing under 1600 north, move that over to 350 east. Right. This we have to bring this up to grade, come down to 350 east. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I, so obviously, this is the most expensive. It's the one that's safe as the, the whole thing. Yeah, I did. I, I'm seriously wondering whether if they're repainting the crosswalks, moving to a scramble crosswalk. The price of that at 400000 seems curiously high to me. You get our rollers out and just do that. I mean, we could. Well, it's not just paint. I mean, there's some hardware. Maybe it's 200000 or 300000 but you're still having to put in some different controllers, some blank out signs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there is. There is quite a bit there. Yeah. And, so, do, and warning signs. But even at that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm surprised that the rest of the scores, safety, compliance, et cetera, didn't put it higher in the list. And I I it was my number two. Some of the concern, <laughs> some of the concern was, you know, there's yeah, a scramble makes sense, but the volumes aren't quite there for pedestrians and vehicles. You really need to have high of both. And, and I know a concern, and I'm just relaying what Taylor has spoken to me about, a concern for him is the amount of time and making sure you clear it before you go back to normal traffic operations and you get some green time, knowing that you have a mom who's 
bringing their kids along and they trip and fall. And now they're in the middle of the intersection. You have your 30 seconds. You know, I think there was some of that as well. And, and what do we have in there that can see that and hold it until it's cleared before all of a sudden something's out there and then the signal just turns. So th those were some of the concerns he had with that. But we can still look at it and evaluate it. I think it, they're very valid questions. Because I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, we're going to go through and kind of whittle it down to which ones we want to bring forward. But I think ultimately we want to get some direction too from you guys as we go forward with our public meeting. How would you suggest we, we move forward with that and, and options and things like that? So yeah. the other thing I want to consider is what else would work, right? Is there a eliminated noise from my or fold out or amenity that makes it more? Probably not the amenity, right? Because you're now directing them straight across. If you're going to put the amenity in, you probably want to still continue it to be the way it is. Um, it's not to say that we couldn't put it on the other side, maybe. And they queue up there, maybe on that northwest side or maybe on the southwest. We, we could do that as well. Yeah. Those those were just on Provo River water users' property, so we would have to go through that. That, that would be a little bit different. Yeah. Regardless, we're going to have to include them anyways because their easement is going through here, so they'll need to be involved anyways. Even if it's on our own property, we'll still have to coordinate with them. As a frequent user of the spot, I just also say it all the time. One that actually works very long, 2000 North. Never <laughs> We have a water fountain? Where? 2000 North. We do? No, on the crossing, big 2000. 2000 North and where? On For this? We have a water fountain there? Yeah, there's a little fountain on the orange seats. Really? I'm going to have to look that up. I didn't even know. Be too thirsty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a drinking fountain. Oh, I thought you meant like some sort of a water feature. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Right. Well, yeah, that's what I kept thinking. Is like, I know there's one on University yeah. Parkway. It's, it's like, yeah. Splash pad right there. We're talking about yeah. a drinking fountain. Okay. Pragmatically um, speaking, I'm seeing we have a chunk of money in the budget, and I this was my favorite. No, not this one. Number eight was my favorite. But I, a lot of the chances of us ever getting six or seven more million dollars. To, to do that, maybe we take the budget we have and do the highest one we can do. You know, the safest, the best, the coolest with what we have. Because, I mean, how many years have we been talking about this problem? Like, maybe there's some expediency here, but we just need to do something. And if we've got money for it, maybe we do something that makes it safer and better now. Maybe sometime in the future we get $25 million to, you know, have fountains and, and you know, doubled grade separated and, you know, flashing lights and everything. But anyway, that's, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. See, this should have been done when it was constructed. So I'm sure the same conversation took place. It, it did. It's too much money. We'll give it a beast. But we don't have enough money to do this on the past the way it should have been done in the beginning yeah yeah i i talked to the engineer he's a friend of mine that did this and yeah. I, he told me about this, this discussion was had when they first did it adam and, uh casey brown mm -hmm. we did, we're gonna and that. so now we're trying to do it my question is who built the murdoch canal trail and are they someone we could go to and say, you know, you guys didn't do this in the beginning. You have any money available that you can help us to do it now? I'm, I'm just wondering, is there another source for money? Well, I think it was Utah County that filled it, right? Be the county. And I think that's probably who gave money to Mag. Yeah, I mean, I think the county came. I don't know how. This process, I know Provo River water users piped it. The county came back through and probably coordinated with them for a trail and their access road. 
Um, but the county, we could approach the county to see what they want to do here if they have any money. But likely for them, it's going to be a matter of priorities too when they right. when they go to their commission. I mean, to your point too, Becky. Um, whatever solution that that comes from the from this series of meetings, I'll still have to go to the council to make sure that they approve me going forward. Because if we want to go with a, a great separated option, then we have to obligate our match money to that, and they need to be made aware of that. So that it, it would all be a process. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, we could talk to the county. I mean, bringing it to the MAG, to, to the MAG uh, Technical Advisory Committee, um, and then their board, it'll still go through a similar process where um, we'll make a presentation and they'll vote whether or not we give this project, you know, a substantial amount of money. Maybe it's going to be funded over a few funding cycles. I don't know. Um, so we, so you said we have 1.2 from the ad revenue. Mm -hmm. So if we want to spend that, Warren has to put in 1.2 or something. No, right. Now, so the way the money, the funding happens with MAG is we do a 6.7 percent match. So roughly seven cents on the dollar. So I have about a hundred thousand dollars set aside. So for this project. So Fred, if you go back to the dollars screen. So anything below 1.3 million, 1.4 million means we get one, two, three, five, and twelve. One, two, two and three was the segment that I think Yeah. Five is three. Go right down. Talk about that. A quick clarification: When we did cost, uh -huh. was high cost a low number or a high number? High cost was a low number. Okay. So the okay. same. Right. That's so five sure. with the right turn bypass. I think that ranked pretty lowly. That was number two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so okay. then, realistically, we would look at the, the eliminating the right hand turns. Either one or all four, or maybe two of them, whatever, mm -hmm. and the scramble are the options that we can afford. So, yeah, you know, what, what's, the, what's the harm in, I mean, if in fact everybody wants it? There's no harm in going back and saying, no, making our case, yeah. right? We make our case, and if we can get the money, we do it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's stake in the beginning, and now we're paying for it. I, I wouldn't. Well, well, mistake. Look, they're trying to make decision. Right. Yeah, yeah, they made the decision because they evaluated yeah. this. Well, they're really quite a problem. problem. The same. So, I mean, I think so we're taking this public, the public, the you can say, here's the bells and whistles. We have to go get, we have to apply for more money from the, you know, from that. Yeah, the funded sum. Yeah. yeah. But if this is what everybody chooses and what everybody says we want that, the alternative, if we don't, at the public meeting, I think that has to be presented. Yeah. Even to that the point, it's not going to be, because I think everybody will say, well, what about it? So it needs to be shown. This has been considered. This is an option. Is it as citizens of the community, do you want to go to the table on this? Or do you want to look at the one that's more affordable? That so we can is not a safe, right? You're sacrificing safety for cost, but could still but there's two components to safety. Make it, make it safer and make it more compliant. Yeah. And, and, we, and we were talking about this prior to, there, there's two components to safety. You have pedestrian and vehicular safety. And then you go into where this was a big part of the conversation initially with the underpass was criminal. Yeah. And, and right now we're working to, to collect some data on some of the larger underpasses that are here locally, just to find out what types of issues there are um to see if there's if there's encampment happening in there and then you're looking at you know the ones down at sand hill road and university parkway maybe uvu i know they monitor those and they can respond a lot faster because they're right there this one is going to be a little bit further away um you don't have vehicular access 
So those are some of the other things that, that need to be taken into account. And, yeah, the cameras there. Right. Well, there's a certain safety cost for waiting longer, isn't there? Like more things can happen before something's done. I mean, right. that's one way to look at it as well. Yep. The longer we don't do anything, there's a safety cost there. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to trust. Me, I don't want anybody to get hurt either. Yeah. Yeah, and that's usually what motivates the expensive alternative. Yeah. Everybody, oh, good. Yeah. And it's not worth that. Yeah. If the cost wasn't an issue, then we could do it. That's it. Let me go back to the back funding real quick. Is, is there any reason that we get approved for this that affects the overall money form can get, or we? They're gonna look at this and say, hey, we just gave you eight million. This other eight million, this other project you need, yeah. you're not getting that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. they need to weigh, they weigh that somehow, or is it a short-term memory and the next time we ask for money next year, they're not even gonna remember this. So the way Meg operates is they'll have their like say for example, that during this funding cycle, there may have been sixty million dollars. And MAG does a, a good job of also holding back 10% of that overall budget as contingency money for everyone's projects. So they have a lot of projects that are had contingency, maybe they didn't use it. So essentially, if if this were if if the direction was to go to the underpass, everyone's safety concerns were going to be addressed. Then there would be a, a, a conversation with Mag to, that I, I would have, you know, saying, Bob, who is here, what's the likelihood of us being able to get another 11 million? Maybe it ends up being 12. Who knows? Whatever it is. I mean, does do you have that? And then he would say, well, I have it. We just got to take it to all the different committees to make sure that they approve it. And then we can go ahead and move that forward. So that would be part of that, or it'd be saying, I have it, but it might be over two funding cycles or something like that. So, so what does that mean in terms of um, like shovelry? If we have our public meeting, public raise in, let's say the underpass is the shining jewel of the night, is that still two years before we start digging anything? So there's, so to your point, shovel ready just means you have a plan ready to go and approved. Okay, and then, so, yeah. so, so that, so that, that depends on when, if they have the money available or if I have to wait until they have more, more money that that's it. So in this case, likely if we wanted to do the underpass, if we wanted to do the scramble, any of them essentially have $1.2 million dollars for this project. So in theory, if any of them, I obviously have the money that we could start design probably within a year from whenever we decide we would have a project ready to go. Depending on which way we go, I don't know. I mean, if it's the the underpass, if they have the money there, I mean, I, I don't have access to those accounts. I really don't know how much money so if they have that much available. They come back and said it's over two cycles, funding cycles. They give us half of the money now. We have to sit on it, and then they give us half of the money later, and then we can start. Is that? I mean, it's going to delay it at least a year if we have to go over that second funding cycle. Yeah, no I mean, or anything like that to be able to get through. Yeah, there, there's no bonding that that happens. I mean, there's no, and I don't think there's any place for us to get any of that money. Um, okay, so it's just. It extends it. It extends it. There is a chance, depending on, on the design, if there was any right-of-way purchases that needed to happen. If we had half of it moved up front, we could go ahead and purchase the right-of-way and get all that taken care of. So then... Design dollars. What's that? Oh, you could have it all designed. We could have it designed, right. And, and for this one, it's a little more... We would have to go through Provo River water users to make sure that... For, for the design, they would definitely want to be there and be involved with all of that. I, I mean, I would imagine with that box culvert or if it's cast in place, concrete, they're going to want to be there inspecting it and making yeah. sure that that big pipe isn't going to go anywhere. And we don't want it to go anywhere either. Um, yeah, because you can undercut. I mean, it's it's bedded yeah, in it's in clism, which is a which is like a flow fill, so it's really not going anywhere. Um, they're going to act like it is, but it's really not. 
but uh, it'll be. Yeah. Okay, with your crap. So <laughs> you can hit it pretty hard. You'd be okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry that I. Um, sorry. When the public meeting, we don't know when the public meeting is this year. We're it'll be this year. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be this year. That, okay. That's. So how long is this a next year project then, where we would actually see some implementation? Are we talking about a year to design and then another year for anything? It depends on what alternative shakes out. If we if we want to do uh, remove the right turn pockets and directional crosswalks and, and additional signing and striping, that's probably next summer, right when we got temperature. But if it's going to be, if it's going to be relocate and put in a hawk signal, it's possible it could be next year. But I mean, that's that's right away that we'd have to talk to the Gilmans and and do that process, and it might be a little bit longer. So I'd add to like the funding going back to the additional mag funding and tell me if I'm off on this, but mag funding cycles every two years they. They accept concept reports for um, new projects. So if this is an off year, you might know better if this is a funding cycle year or you might have to wait a year to apply. This, this is a funding cycle year. This is an approved project, but they only get their big lump. I mean, it just depends on their how, how their money flows. I don't know how it flows. They might actually have money in there and, and they could fund it. I would just have to ask, and I can, I guess an action item for me is I can ask Bob Allen if we had to get an, an additional 12 to 12 million. I'll actually text him. Just for uh, context, what's the largest mag funded project in Mormon you've been a part of? How much money? Is this a small project? Is this a last uh, lot? Is it million? No, um, the biggest ask I have seen was a project in i think it was america I, I i i apologize i'm not too familiar with the north county american fork highland area whatever they are up there they had to extend a road through and they had been working forever and ever trying to get it and finally they had a buyer that was willing to sell or a, a will a willing seller and they needed an additional i think it was either four or six million because now they had someone ready to go. They needed to do it. And they needed to do it now. And they came to the TAC and we approved it. So they added that money to the project. The biggest project I've been involved that has been a MAG funded project is probably Lakeview Parkway. Um, and we're at 14 million. So, yeah. That's a fairly big size. That's probably yeah. as big as they go in, the, in one. Yeah. And one big lump sum like that. Usually they're over. Like Lakeview Parkway is a. The regional space we're talking about. Yeah. In all scheme of things, Lakeview Parkway isn't that long for 14 million. Yeah. Well, it's like three quarters of a mile. It's a reach for you. Yes. But yes. This is a small intersection or really. It is, but it's a big regional use. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why it got funded yeah. because it's the Murdoch Canal Trail. Yeah. And 16th North is a is is on the functional yeah. classification map too. So that's why it, it qualifies for it. Um, but I can ask Bob, I I'll, I'll shoot him a text right now to see. You know, would Mag be able to fund an ask of, of ten million dollars if we had it to add that to our project? Are you saying ten just because you figure it's, it's going to cost a minute? I'm just going to go big or go home, okay. right? Yeah. yeah, keep in mind. You have to get money back. Well, yeah, I mean that. that I mean, it, it, essentially, it's like this is my 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 budget, and if we bid it out accordingly, it's less than yeah. So do you physically have the one point two, or is that? They're just going to pay for it when it comes around. So how it works is that we pay it and then they just reimburse us. So I actually overspend an account and then they just re reimburse me. What is we're thinking it will be able to scratch so we get that other kind of job. Oh. Something else. Yeah. <laughs> so these two probably won't be on the board <laughs> next time. <laughs> we asked before we did it. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. So Sam, did I hear you say that Mag's budget is like 60 million? So when they have their funding cycle, like this, the upcoming cycle year, I think there's going to be about a hundred million dollars eligible for projects. And that's federal money. Isn't it? It's federal money. It's uh, sales tax money, county sales tax money. 
and this the federal money is uh like cmac money for uh gosh it's for air air quality just mitigation air quality and then there's active transportation money there's certain pots of money that'll total up to the 100 100 million dollars air quality if you got an underpass if you don't have to sit there well, sure. I mean, that's 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 all. Right. I mean, and and that's what happens is, is when we bring these to Mag, they'll say, "Oh, wow, this is a great project that would qualify for these types of funds," and they help the whole process. Yeah, we can save the whole one. Yes, yeah. CMAC money is used quite often for transmission. That's great. Right. So yeah. I think the tunnels contribute to world peace. <laughs> there we go. One thing I just to say, keep in mind on these estimates, these are today's dollars. And when we do the funding yeah. applications, we have to, the, the money, once you're approved, I think it's five years before that the money comes available for new projects. But this is an existing project that's probably different. But when we do a funding application, we have to account for inflation. So if it's eight million and $8 million, it's probably 12 million. Five years from now. Five years to give it, yes. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. Inflation has gone crazy over the last five years since COVID. Um, so, um, let me go up here, um, get back to the waiting. So, when we met last, we talked to you guys and asked you to prioritize these alternatives. What was most important to you on these criteria? And based on your uh, Priorities and what was most important to the pack, we created weighting for these criteria. So, go user safety was uh, most important at five. Compliance was a two here, the cost three, and you can see how this lays out. And so, we applied this weighting to the scoring, and this is how it played out here. Um, didn't change number one and number two here. Uh, still, great separated crossing, that's ranked one, and then uh, directional crosswalks. Um, I did adjust a little bit some of the others, uh, like the rerouting the trail to 350 East, that moved up one, and the amenity, which was number three, moved down to five. Uh, grade separated crossing at 350 East, this is probably one of the bigger ones, so I think in our team rating, that ranked number nine, now it's number four, it's in the weighting from the tax priorities. Mm -hmm. um, number five was adding an amenity. So that's still in the top five. And uh, realigning the trail to 450, which is number six. Um, for our team waiting, that was number five. So that dropped a little bit. So I think the top six are mostly the same as the team with the team's waiting, with the exception of the grade separated crossing at 350 East. That came up quite a bit. This waiting. Um, then you can see you can come down roundabouts, still ended up being scored at <laughs> the bottom. No so way. they didn't they didn't change much. Uh, pedestrian scramble that uh, dropped went from actually it was eight. So these these two options tied at number seven for the directional crosswalks with eliminating that northbound right turn lane. And then uh, off the road, and real line, well, these realigning at 1640 North, those tied. Um, the pedestrian scramble was then nine. And that was, was the eight, eight. So it dropped one with the tack waiting one. So it changed things up a little bit. Um, I said the, the 450 East that came up quite a bit. And uh, that was adjusted a bit in 350 for great separated crop, and that's the one that jumped up to the top five. That's interesting, though, for, the, for how much different the team rating was. I'm surprised at how similar the results are. So something's taking over. I don't know if it's cost. Yeah. Or trail leader safety. But something's kind of governing that more than others. Yeah, cost was. But that doesn't make any sense because it's cost. Cost is what it is. We took that. Cost that we that out, out of the That's the right thing. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, with the weighted um, team, yeah, 
it's even in half. Yeah, so we did not wait as often. We, right. So uh, there are three surprisingly different. Three versus one, five versus three. Three yeah, versus four. Well, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Three, two, three, four. <laughs> I missed. I missed ours up. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't. I, I was like, I don't know how to break this. I'll, you know, just use my best judgment. But yeah, that's that's all it's going to do. But at the end of the day, we can't take all the work and summer to a public meeting. That's the point. I was. I'm not sure that we would take all twelve. Alternatives to a Perfect. That's yeah. a, that's exactly what we want to hear you say. That's the next steps. <laughs> what do we take to what do we for what do we take to the public? We want to get I there. The Which one? Half of them. Okay. So we got a motion for hats. Which hats? Well, let's just start with the number and then we'll get to the solutions. Why? Which one would we like here? Well, we, we went through the process together to weight these and rank them, right? One, one through 12. And we've gone through that. And we've showed it to you. So we've gone through the math. So now, are there any ones that are like, you know what? Let's eliminate this one for sure. This one for sure. Let's keep this. Let's keep that. Because the reality is, because I just texted Bob and he was just like, you know, that might be a big ask for that underpass. And the reality is, is we haven't really, because I told him it, it might even cost twice that amount once we start looking at the sewer, the water, how are we going to reroute all of the utilities? I mean, we know we're running alongside this large um, aqueduct, but if we got a lower sewer and we got to do that, and we got to chase it halfway down 16th North to catch grade, or we got to put in a lift station, maybe it ends up being 20 million. Because like I said, I still have to go to the council and ask them for their blessing to approve it. It's and maybe it just doesn't happen. What's that? This isn't just digging across. The road. No, it's just, no, <laughs> no, no, not at all. So, I mean, some of these might naturally fall out, but I mean, that's kind of, hey, we've looked at these. These guys will get a little bit more detailed, a little more further analysis. And then we have six or seven that we feel pretty good about. And then those are the ones essentially we'll take to the public meeting. They'll be on poster boards. Maybe we have it a little bit different format, so it's easier for everyone to see, and then they give us their vote. Um, so we'll go there in the top six that are that are common to both rankings. Five, uh, four, five. So yeah. So training. Alternative eight is that's oh, that's so solid. That's eight, number one on both. Two, 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 three, six, and, and three. eleven. Right. I mean, some of these, if we're going directional crosswalks, we can show directional crosswalks with amenity, and that probably takes care of well, I was thinking probably of three of them, course. right? Because one of them's taking, eliminating the right turn. Maybe we just show all of them without the right turn, directional crosswalks and amenity. That's three of them down to one. Yeah, I was thinking all of the eliminating the right turns be kind of consolidated some form of mm -hmm. yeah. those. I, I think we should present the, the scramble from the standpoint of this is the quickest, least cost alternative. Uh, and I think that that will garner some support. But, I mean, I slide second favorite, but at the end of the day, I think that we owe it to the citizens to show them the least cost option. Yeah. Uh, if we do the, the great separation, combine the right turn restriction, with you know shorter crosswalks and that kind of thing as an option. And then the other option is to move the crosswalks mm -hmm. from the intersection, either east or north or whatever, uh, west. That's some combination of that. And then the roundabouts, that basically gives us four main themes of what we're going to So if we're, if we're going to move the crossing, do we want to go north? Do we want to go east? Do we want to go west? Do we want to just do one or do we want to do all three? Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, if you guys decided which one, if you had to choose two of the three. Well, what about going north and east from the standpoint of we, we talked about options to connect, but if we move the crosswalk north and then come up and around the corner and move the crosswalk east, you get 
separation that wasn't in one you know single alternative. What was the cost east and west very similar? They were yeah. Well, I mean, well, why why is that one right? That can be one. And well, right. Whether we go east or west, the west has got a great separation. No, well, no, 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 I mean, I mean, for me, if I were if I were to pick one, I would go west before I would go east, because then I'm not going across those driveways of those yeah, homes. You know, the side, walk, do all that and there's also been a comment made that that's that little sp spot between fourth east through there's the trees, and they kind of like that little spot of that trail. So, so I mean, I'm, I'm gonna this is probably a spot that I don't I don't like that one. I don't know how it ended up so high. Which there. one? Uh, using a hot signal across this field. And, and my concern is compliance, right? And, and the Delaware study on hot compliance shows that, that the biggest problem was pedestrians and bikes don't use the button. So if you don't use the button, then you have people crossing 1600 at a mid block location. I mean, you couldn't ask for something worse other than four lanes. Right? Yeah, so, you, know, you have to push both. Mm. And then, and then the other issue, like now the other second base issue, is that the people don't understand is they press the button and then they go before they get the walk signal, right? So maybe repeat trail users will finally figure it out. But but my biggest concern is you have a mid block crossing, and so my point was we talked about I brought this up last time, like we're subjectively analyzing this, but there is hard data on mid block crossing toxic compliance max rates. Right, and it's not great. It's not bad. There actually are improvements in, in in safety, but but you still have a high level of fatality. So that's my point. Like at some point, we have to analyze this and say, okay, we've had a bunch of objective well, analysis. Well, well, that's but, but that's where this comes. Like if we I get these six or seven, some really good options where where uh, the ones that might be terrible or maybe through based on this subjective ranking. So what so what data are so which ones are you, you thinking we should look at? I still like the roundabout. Okay, so so I so, so so I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you a hard time here. There's a roundabout with the hawk which you love, but then you just didn't like hawks. I don't like talking a mid block. In a mid block, if you go to the Ziegler study, which is in the Ashko, it's referenced in the Ashko pedestrian uh um, manual. For the Ziegler study, it's going to tell you on a mid block location on a 35 mile an hour roadway, don't do it. Okay. But as hot signal, I mean, it's a signal, it's a signal at intersection. People expect it. I think it's amazing. Don't expect it in a roundabout, though. Around that, I expect it to go around and around and around. And what do you think he's done? So let's hear the argument on that one. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know he's done it. Yeah. I've never seen it done. And I'm not saying it's good, I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying don't throw this out just because you don't like roundabouts. Because the one might be amazing. Because the reason I like it is because you push one button and you get straight across. Going right through the middle and you get everybody to stop on their thing one button. The the thought process was behind the one at the one at the U where the, the track slide goes right through the middle of it. And they got yeah. arms that cross down and they go. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the, the roundabout up. It's up at the U, just east of the football stadium. There's a roundabout up there, and they stop, and then tracks goes right up through the middle of it. Right. Uh, Granted, these kids are on a train. But it's also a, but it's also a T intersection. It's not a four-way mm -hmm. on that. So you've got, it's already a little different. I would argue that the, if, if we're going to talk about putting the rock on a roundabout, that's essentially a scramble with a roundabout. It is. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the reason I like the, the reason I like the hawk as opposed to a scramble is the scramble when you push the button, you, you punish everybody. You punish everybody at the expense of getting a pedestrian through, right? Or a toxic bill, you have a very limited window, right? You get across, you get your green, and then it's flashing red, and the pedestrian traffic can go after they stop and nobody's there. So you're less impacting congestion of traffic. Than if you stop everybody. Well, to your point too, on 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 the roundabout, you'd still allow the rights. Exactly, but you still have all the other movements. You still on. you still have some some movements. Is it, a, is it a two lane roundabout or one? It's a one lane. If it's one, you're going to get all kinds of if they back up, yeah, yeah. But, you're back up, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what about the? So there would be 
in that scenario, you would have room for someone to pause in the roundabout and then hit a hawk again to go the other half. Well, I think you said that when you push one button, it, it activates both hawks. I understand, but if Sam's scenario that was brought up is Bombs dragging on top of it, falls down. I don't disagree. That and maybe maybe having two buttons is a better solution to that problem. Yeah. The problem yeah. is the problem with that is is compliance again. And I I'm fine with if you're gonna let go of it. I'm fine with yeah. that yeah. Yeah. button push yeah. trigger and go sound to the hawk. Yeah. But I think there should be a button in the middle in case someone doesn't make it all the way. That's fair. They can Those ask are two patient drivers at that intersection. Let me tell you. They do not like to stop for you and get out of my way. And so I think you have to look at human behavior. What are people really going to do when they're in a roundabout and they get stopped? And I, well, I don't want to quote for us. I don't either. Sometimes it, it works well most of the time, but if there's someone trying to cry, that means I guess. It is uh, um, if someone is trying to cross, it creates all sorts of habits from the standpoint of I've seen them cross halfway, stand in the middle and waiting for cars to come out of the roundabout, which then the car stops, and then they're not quite sure. There, there's a lot of behavior problems with that. If we did the roundabouts. I, I agree you have a single shot and you do that, but if not, I would like to see the crosswalks move a little further away so that you could get one or two cars staged out of the roundabout before they stop at the crosswalk. But that puts the crosswalks back closer to yeah. mid-block. I think typical design practice is that the crosswalk is back yeah. so that one car can be outside of the roundabout. So stop. That, that would be where people know how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> um, people here will stop in the roundabout for someone in a crosswalk over there. It's not as bad as Idaho, that's worse. But, um, you know, we, right now there are more students back at UVU. I see it more frequently. And my concern is on a Saturday, you're going to, I suppose you have trouble with it now, but you're going to have trouble. On Saturday, the rest of the week, it would probably be fine. But on a Saturday, when you get a lot of people on the trail and you got people going to yard sales, <laughs> it's it, in the summer. In the winter, eh, nobody cares. Nobody's on the trail. No, the trail's busy in the morning and in the evening. The reason why this intersection is so interesting, you've got an intersection used by school children and local people. And then crossing over that is a trail. So I don't know that you've got a lot of intersections like this in Utah. Do you? I think this is where it crosses diagonally. It's, it's yeah. Kind of, yeah. So you have two types of users, and you have very young users, the school mm -hmm. kids. And that's why this is so scary. And I know he likes roundabouts. I think a roundabout was developed in hell <laughs> for the pedestrian. It's fine if people, you know, drivers finally figure it out, which you thought drivers still having trouble. So, you know, they're looking to see anybody coming. They are not looking for a human being on foot or on a bike. That's the least of their worries. And so they just don't want to get hit by that guy. Those people will keep coming at them, they won't stop. You know, they just get really frustrated. So, go, well, there's this pedestrian trying to cross there. And they hit him. I think it, a nightmare, you would create such a nightmare, you'd have access constantly. That's just, that's why. <laughs> I think that one of the things associated with that is pedestrians are expecting to cross with a stop button or some kind of signal. They're not expecting you know, with to work into the flow of traffic. Yeah. And there's no signal there, there's no stop of mm -hmm. the traffic. Yeah. That's problematic. If we did the hawk on it, then we would have a signal to stop. People would have to stop. To stop. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would be a signal there to encourage vehicle stopping, which then 
that's a visual cue for people. Okay, now it's safe to cross the street. If you don't have that visual cue that it's safe to cross, a crosswalk and a roundabout are a bad idea when they're in the same it's safe. There has to be some type of a signal if you're going to put a roundabout in or anywhere. If you're going to have a crosswalk, you got to have a signal. And a roundabout straight up just doesn't have a signal. Yeah. I can't remember we talked about this uh, going back to the uh, thing. We talked about it last time about uh, analyzing what kind of crashes we're having or pedestrian impact we're having. We anecdotally talked about last time that it's the left turners that aren't thing in the right. Our yeah. right. So if we talk about blink out time and and uh potentially less, and if that would solve the conflict problem. We've we've talked a little bit about that internally as a team. Uh, I don't remember just talking about that as an option. That wasn't one of the options that we come up with. I mean, that would be a fairly cheap, relatively speaking, option if we can stop the conflict, still maintain a level of services. No free right turns and lights, not flashing yellow, but right. green, green only. red, left turn. So that was actually get green, there's never going to be a second no, right turn, yet, right? Unless you flash yeah. them out, right? But you never get a conflict. And maybe that only happens when a pedestrian button gets pushed. I don't know. But, but, but maybe there's a way to solve the conflict problem and we leave it the way it is with. Signal you have to consider orange drivers. How many orange drivers run the yellow and the red? Well, it's okay oh, because, yes. because we, we're going to delay pedestrians a little bit, right? Yeah, so we, we, we allow them two or three seconds all ahead. That gets them out of the intersection, and we get the pedestrians green. Yeah. I, one of the big issues here is compliance with patrol users. They're already not. Yeah, they we're talking adults that aren't complying. It's not yeah. the kids, it's the adults. No, no, you're exactly right. I mean, that's that's why we're here to discuss. I mean, these types of things, whether it's it's when we're going to protect it and blank out signs, to me, that those would be part of those bulb outs, no right turns, directional crosswalks. Those are all part of that solution. That's the way that, that I see it. Um, the roundabout, it, it's an interesting uh, concept because it was the concept that was uh, proposed by Alta Engineering and they are kind of one of the leading active transportation consulting firms out there because we hired them specifically because of the trail component and they're the ones that wanted that and it's and we can go ahead and look at some data for the roundabouts we have the pedestrian vehicular con conflicts and the thing is is it's hard to count the close calls, which is probably what a lot of folks see, compare it to the actual accident. And then, I mean, as as, as a side note, I was talking to, to UVU students today, um, and it would be interesting to know the cost of intersections, roundabouts versus signalized intersections, not just the cost, you got the upfront construction cost, you have the ongoing maintenance cost, and I think you also have some of the, the unintended accident costs. You have a signalized intersection. Okay, that's great. We think it's safer, but the reality, does it cost more accident-wise to have that versus a roundabout where you're typically going, if it's designed correctly, 20 miles an hour, the severity of, of the accidents is a lot less. Are there just as many? Possibly, but... I've actually increased access to signalized intersections for totally different types of accidents. Yeah. So you, you kind of trade trade off. Right. We could point. And looking at that, there's some things we you can do. Um there's that uh, I don't know if it's Ashto or which agencies created a clearing house for like they've done studies of different types of treatments for different roadways, intersections, and the studies and they um, actually come up with the factor for what type of your accidents can be reduced. You know, sometimes it's like fatal accidents are significantly reduced, but Property accidents are increasing. So there's that data out there. It's available and you can do that. And I just finished a graduate school class and um, basically did a project was like this training at a civilized intersection into a roundabout and looking at what the cost of accidents were. You got to keep in mind. So this is like data taken from like all over the country. Um, and so it's, it, 
it's not meant to actually give you a hard number, but to have you with an idea for like decision making. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there's available, there's data out there that could help us in decision making, but it's like pick that with know what that data is used for. So is anyone ask chat to do what kind of intersection is like that? Didn't do that. <laughs> Did AI. Oh, you want to take that assignment? <laughs> if, if I'm going to take the assignment, I'm going to go ask the traffic engineer. I have a concern about, well, I guess it's just kind of a personal thing. I, I find brown folks difficult to drive and, and confusing at the same time because they're all different. So I, I this a roundabout with a any kind of signal, I think then it makes it even more novel, I worry about that. And also, is this even big enough? Like we were talking about the hard turns, like look at the one on 1200 or 400 West that isn't finished yet <laughs> because it needs to be bigger. Mm -hmm. um, then we're into a lot more cost and everything else. So. Is that a two-way roundabout at 1200? The, the proposed one, it's going to be the, the proposed one or the existing one? Because existing is just one, but it's proposed is going to be a hybrid where three fourths of it will have two lanes, and then there's one small little piece that'll have one lane. And that's what's holding that That one is what's holding that up is the consultant getting me the descriptions that I finally got to the church and to UVU so I can get the property. And now that I can get the property, I can look to finalize the design, get it advertised here in a couple months. And because we're trying to do that in the construction window of June, July, August to try and get it in there and maximize that. Yeah. So that's probably part of the problem. I would have to see if we go well, around about I'm envisioning design problems and all sorts of problems putting it in that spot because I don't know who owns all those utilities on the northwest corner but that could be a fair to relocate that. Yeah. I feel like I hijacked that but with the clear or obvious solution of this sample size nobody likes roundabouts but <laughs> <laughs> coming back to the original question I like the idea of combining some of the more Obvious, much like more similar ones, uh -huh. into kind of one idea, and then if everybody loves that idea, then we can expand that to say, oh, there's three of that, idea. and then and yeah, we can explore kind of those. So I like that we got one of the crossing, like West better, but one of the crossing, um, one of the whatever the three were you're talking about, the full out in the middle, yep, yep, yeah, yeah. three alignment of the thing, and then. I, I, don't know. Know. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to have it there. It's fair to put it, but I certainly the cheapest option should be in there as, as a yeah. reference. Yeah. yeah. We put it in the scramble, we put it in the roundabouts, we put it in the grade cross, the, the end grade, we put it in the bowl belts, yep. and, and we put and it in the, the crossing somewhere else. Crossing somewhere else. So there's five categories. We put these 12 options into those five categories, which in one case, the scramble is a single option in the category. Right. The, the well, with that too, if, if it's a scramble, do we want to narrow it up too? Do we want to put in bulb out? I mean, we can do a scramble with a roundabout, a scramble with with a typical intersection, right? Maybe we put yeah. those as one option of, of two different. Or maybe points. it's it, it's a scramble, but but we uh, eliminate the right terms and we just because obviously we want to shorten that distance right. as well. Shorten the time that people want to be. So so is is one of them to be fair falling out? The the great separated crossing at three fifty east. Does that feel like it's yeah? Does that feel like we should? I mean, because because for me, just to, I mean, knowing that that Councilman Millet was here last time, she has concerns about the safety, and that safety component is going to come out. And I haven't reached out to our, our our public safety folks 
we can have the one that crosses fourth beast is one of the the alternatives and then we're going to and then we dive deep into it's like no it's going to cost 20 million there is concerns about encampment there is concerns about response time it's going to include this this and this and maybe these all naturally just fall out i like that so yeah trying to turn them into five options five is a decent number it, it goes from the low end on cost to the bells and whistles on the you know full grade separation and it gives us then three options in between which would be the roundabouts moving the cross box or uh, doing the whole balance or some combination. So, okay, so I wrote that down. So there's directional crosswalks at the intersection. You know, those are all similar. Pedestrian scramble, a roundabout, with about the grade set, do the grade separated crossing at 400 East, because I don't figure out everybody's going to ask about that. Yeah. And then a crossing at one of those um, east, west, or north, one of those. Present those. I think I present west, right? But they say there's options here, right? If you want to cross the yeah. park, we go here, here, here. I think the only one that they would ask would be the one to the north, because the one to the east, I mean, for me, I would just say, you know, when we looked at separating them, we, there's more conflict points on that side of the road with, with the driveway. So it naturally mm -hmm. fell out. And we can, and that's the I, thing I is, it, I like it better is because traffic on on the west side? On the east side. East side. East. Oh. Right. So, you have Hawks, you go up there, but it's more, we're almost at an intersection. Right. Closer to an intersection. Right? It's right at one. It's at the oil. But you don't have to drop on these other six miles. Yeah, because this is going to drive those. Well, and, 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 and all, in all fairness, it's, it's not a bad idea to go into there with five. If the public comes out with a better idea than this group here, and we end up with six, that's not a bad thing either. I'm, I'm back on what he was saying. But, uh, you know, moving away from the fourth east, your traffic volumes are much higher east of fourth east, in the morning at least, than they are west of fourth east. Awesome. Because people are coming down, going that way, they're going north. They're coming up this. Everybody wants to get that direction, it seems, or north or south. There aren't as many people trying to go west on 1600 north in the morning because. See, a lot of people turn that 450. At, four, at 400. 400 but yeah. at this intersection, you're emptying out north of, of 1600 north. And most of them are either going straight. Or east. Yeah, that's what I noticed. And the ones coming north, you know, some of those guys are turning, but everybody seems to want to get that direction they want to go to BYU, to Word Perfect, to school. There are two or three schools over there that families like. That's why I noticed, that's why I won't cross north to south on that east because. Everybody's coming through there. That is the most dangerous crosswalk there. And so anything that features that and takes away the, the west <laughs> crosswalk, I'm against it because, you know, the east one's where you get your life. <laughs> because you've got everybody emptying out all those houses north. It would be interesting to see the daily traffic. See if my observations are correct. So you're saying coming south, turning east, that left coming turns? Yeah, uh, coming south. Oh, that's the killer because they go into the sun. They can't see. Yeah. So I guess we should look at a volume count and just see what we have in there, see what Taylor yeah. has now that school's in session two. And we did that in the spring during school, so we did some traffic counts then. So. Do you remember anything, any outliers, anything? I don't remember off the top of my head. I have to look and see what happened. I guess part of the thing too is we'll want to know because right now the, the level of search for the intersection works pretty well. We take away the right turns. We'll want to know overall the intersection might still operate at a, a C, but then we're going to show that certain lanes are going to be starved and they might be at a D or an E, even though some might be an A. We probably want to have that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I think we do have that for the existing. So we can look but if we take it away, we take it away, we can synchro it and see where it goes. It yeah. certainly makes it safer because a lot of those, that's another type of pitch that that's right for that. See, just not much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it'll make it a lot safer to eliminate that right, that free right turn. Yeah. But, okay. but it'll back it up. There's a lot of people, you know, you're managing a lot of people in that free right yeah. turn. I think the only option that really drops out is the separated right turn from west to, yeah. to south or east to south. Yeah. That the free right. Completely the oh, other. Yeah. Yeah. One other get kind of filter in those options. Okay. Yeah, that's that's right. the, the separated right turn. Yeah, I'm just going to say that the roundabout process that you're going to use Oh, it's going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think the great separate yeah. is going to be twice of what you guys did it as. Yeah. It's a concept. Yeah. Well, we, we just wanted to do a volume ballpark of yeah. where is it going to be at, and then let's get some direction, and then let's get some direction, and then let's get some direction, and then dig into a little bit more design and yeah, vertical and what the challenges are going to be. And even that's going to be off by 25%. Yeah. I wouldn't want to necessarily give these, these cost data to the public and have the construct. It's just helping us run it through these for the so we know it's most friendly. Oh, next question. Where's the open Yeah. Here. Yeah, we'll, we'll have, we'll, hold it here probably in the council chambers we'll just have it like it is there it'll be open and we'll just have a kind of a an open house type format we'll have tables set up with options and let people come in ask questions would it be better to grab a room up at high school or in the neighborhood yeah that's what as opposed to we can't we'll just have to rent it should be, but we'll have to rent it. We'll have to figure. Well, it'll be a project, a, a cost to it, but we can. Well, and just just an idea. I think it would be received better by the public if it's in the. So I mean, I'm I'm down by Hobby Lobby, so not that I won't go to it, but uh, what the heck. You know? Yeah, because we could do, we've done, we've had them at, at, at the senior center, like 16th North. Almost everyone came to that one. Yeah. And we were at, at the senior center. So we can do wherever. If, and, we, and we'll look into the school, see what's available. Something great. Elementary school that's up there. And do you do a mailer? How do you do a mailer? Yeah. So yeah. normally we'll send out a postcard or mailer. It kind of depends on how far you want to reach the patient staff, how well they get around for your audience. If they were close to them, no, you no, need to get trail users. Yeah, and I would also go at least three miles. Yards oh, wow. I don't know if I'm going to do that. That's a lot of people. I mean, I, I actually, I, I think we probably do the mailer and we can put some stuff on there in social media, but three miles, I mean, you're going all the way to Pleasant Grove. Put signs on the trail. Yeah, it's not on the trail. Yeah. 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 along the trail. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and that's the thing too, is we can generate a map, but we can give you guys the the addresses. We have a little bit different luxury than you guys. Mm -hmm. Seems like when I've talked to Jake's associates, it can get kind of complex, but we can go all along the trail, all the homes that are, that if that's, if we think it's the trail and go outside five, 500 feet all the way through Orem, if that's what you guys would want to do, or I mean, People who go to Tippin on this, well, that's no people who use that's a lot. I think that the local people who use that intersection and then signs on the trail would use it at that intersection. So we go the intersection know, out. Here's what they think, you know, three miles down the trail. They're using that. Okay. That's so intersection out a mile. 
That's I, I would go less than that. I'd go maybe half. Okay. Three quarters. Yeah. Uh, Whatever's but, reasonable for your usual uh, signage we at usually, the intersection. We usually do a thousand feet on an on an extreme case when we're noticing something for like a zone change. I mean, yeah, we can do social media in the trail for sure. And you got um, Linden. You want to catch people in Linden, so the signs on the trail. Because you know, all your Linden users go through there if they're going down, then coming back or wherever. So we want to catch Linden users. I mean, they're not paying for this, but they're going to have on a pain because they go through that intersection. Maybe my my last question here: If there are community groups, one of the neighborhood group, a trail user group that maybe exists, a bicycling group that maybe exists, or anything like that. There's a there's a PTA We can. There is a kid that did some sort of a uh, poll, and I can see if I can find his email. Is it Lars or something? I can't remember. Liam maybe is his name. He sent me some. He did some sort of a Google sheet thing. Did I share that with you? You told me about it. I don't know if I saw the results though. I think it's Liam is his name. What's that? There is a, a yeah. Yeah. We lost our member that on that. Yes. Yeah, that one. People that are on that intersection. We don't want to read something to read signs while they're driving. Well, actually, yeah. we do because that will cause more problems. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good point because you know, you have the people who live north of 16. That one proposal of taking it up for east and then going over, and you're going to have a lot of people upset about that <clears throat> because. They already have to stop down there and they have to stop it. They're getting just getting up their speed at that one where you took it up. Isn't that one? They're just getting the speed. We're not in there. Yeah. yeah, it was Liam Fry. And I just sent you his email that he sent me. He created a, a Google form and I think he actually did like a little QR code or a QL code, QR code. Oh, yeah. And I think people went by and went straight to it and then they did a thing. So uh, he was just a citizen named Liam, Liam Fry. He sent me a form. He wanted me to endorse it. I was like, uh, I think it looks good, but I can't endorse it. I'd love to take your data, but we're going through a process. Okay. All right. Well, I think that helps. We can work on getting uh, the open house plan, get the exhibits ready, publicize it. I said, I think we'll work with Sam on, on that and, of course, signs on the trail, social media, to try and expand as far as we can. But, but no, there's work, work with you on. I, I think but, just do what's reasonable. Like, I, have, I think there's a, I don't know, for me, there's a fairness thing. Like, if, if you all of your posts, all of your announcing is a certain distance from whatever, then I don't think you give this intersection, you know, special treatment because everybody thinks their neighborhood has, this, you know, the biggest problem. So let's let's do what's normal. That's that's my opinion anyway. And then we do some of these extra things, trying to grab some people. And you know, Kathy's going to tell her neighbors, and people will tell each other. Well, and the driver see. Signs on the trail, I as a pedestrian go to see. The signs on the trail, all those people who are driving in section harvest, and they're going to be going, Who came up with this? Why didn't somebody tell us you were going to redo this major intersection to go through everything? So I think social media, as much as we can do to get the drivers that they come. I mean, we can go from section. Like, do we just want to go 16th to 2000 and then 4th East to Main Street and 16th to 12th? 
Yeah. Seems like it's about yeah, a half mile. Sixteenth to two thousand. It's called a. It's called a. It's called a QR code. That's how they do it. Yeah. Let's see. So they're driving and they're getting out their cameras while well, the sandwich board guys over there. Have this giant QR. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. But yeah, right. Um, at this last few slides, we're just trying to respond to some of the questions and comments that have come up. So, <laughs> and if you want to go through them, we can. Just quick questions like one was that can all the alternative for number eight can the underpass be evaluated with emphasis on crime prevention and safety? Of course, crime prevention staff going to involve the public safety department. Um, this is one question that I thought came up what the park went under now instead of over. And so that's, there's some concerns there. Uh, in order to do that, 6600 north went under the canal, so the fourth piece would have to go under as well. And so it costs just maybe 15, I don't know. But um, anyway, that, that's, we think that would be cost prohibitive. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the thing is that. The canal pipe, that's the kicker right there. But if it wasn't for the pipe, yeah, we wouldn't have the trail. <laughs> We'd be close, right? Yeah. The pipe. pipe wasn't there. Well, the pipe in there wouldn't be a trail. Exactly. Trail. Um, see, this is probably your question. Uh, why is north south crossing on the west side eliminated? Some of the options, I think that was probably your concern. So that was just. The reason we did that is like the visual conflicts, um, just pedestrians. Is for that crossing um, when we shift the crossing to sixteen forty north of three fifty east. Try to just direct. Yeah. The people to the trail. Yeah. Yeah. And you directed them into dangerous crossing. So we have to take a look at it. So this isn't written in stone, but <laughs> their context after we flush those out and your input is very valuable. Um, we'll, that will be something that we continue to think about because now we have that information. Um, questions can alternative number three for an amenity in the southwest corner be used for other alternatives? And uh, I think we also talked about that. That could be using those others. That's a good one. So, and that was what we wanted to discuss tonight. So, appreciate the feedback. So, We've got the five options that we talked about that we want to present to the public. Um, talked about how we're going to advertise that. And uh, so that's the next step is to work on getting ready for that open house and then advertise it. Get in fact, but from the public, ultimately, we want to narrow this down to one, but we're trying to step it down. So once we get the impact from the input from the public, we can start taking that input and try to narrow it down to. Um, the, the top 85 is more engineering analysis and uh, come back with the recommended, the, the top recommended treatment. So, anything you want to add, Sam? So just thinking out loud, I mean, would you guys foresee this process? We meeting again in October with more detailed analysis numbers with the thought of having the public meeting in November. Um, so, I mean, it's just, how, how would you guys foresee this happening? You guys just want us to move, I mean, cause. Uh, yeah. 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 At this point, we got some direction. If we can move it and have a public meeting in the third week or fourth week of October, just plow forward. Uh, you know, I, I think waiting another month to make a decision to make another decision, <laughs> uh, I, I'd rather see it move forward. And to your point, that the sooner we can get something in place, I don't know mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So, taking time for meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I think we should press. Well, we'd probably try and, okay. I mean, when it comes to October, we'll just have to look either early October or after fall break. Well, we we'll have, have to look to at Tempanaga's high school schedule too, if we're going to try to do it there. You know, the status, of, it'll be a big thing. I don't know if it'll matter in the evening there. I mean, if they have, I imagine they got enough rooms that, I mean, we're not going to have it in a gymnasium. They got to, I mean, preferably it would be nice to have an activity there and then people could come in and and we could collect that and maybe we don't have to rent it. You know what I mean? That's kind of a nice thing. Oh, we could kind of work off of a yeah. concert or something. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, it would be nice to capture that personally. Because usually that's what when when they in the past where we've had to rent them is to have a custodian there and someone there to open it and close it and things like that. So, but yeah, right. Yeah. So we'll look to do that. Then we'll look for something. Uh, we'll look for something in October. Yeah. Right around before after fall break, depending on what we can pull together for data. Yeah. 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 Talk about that. Sam and Sam Yeah. And and we'll have to and I'll talk to our public safety and get some data. If there's anything we need to have for we want current counts if we have those volumes and things yeah. like that. Yeah, we have, so we've got the we've got a lot of those volumes. So get the DJ to those type of counts. We may want to buy. We may want to redo it just because of the school yeah. realignment happened. Yeah. We had some closed, so we might want to just reevaluate those just to make sure. And it's not a bad thing just to compare maybe patterns of change or have. I you have Northridge, isn't too far away. Um, and then there's Orchard. And then I'm trying to think, what's the name of the junior high that's down there? Oh, the one, no. Well, that's actually in the No, what's the one that's set by Orchard Elementary? They got two schools down there. Oh, sorry. Kids right there. <laughs> 20 years ago. Um, they're all. No, either. It's like I know the name of that. You see if it's on. The... Be good because those parents are involved and. Canyon View. And if they close Windsor, then you've got all the kids who live south of 1600 North crossing 1600 North to get to school. And that's really going to impact. They're not crossing it for at least. Well, some of them may. Uh, but yeah, if that goes through, okay. Some people don't have parents to drive. I think that's Fantastic. it. Anything else, guys? Well, thank you so much for your input and feedback. I think we've gotten, I said, I wanted to make sure we got what we wanted to present to the public. That was one of the biggest things. So thank you for helping us get there. Thank you for being calm and with me. You're really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know the city better than me, so I better listen to you. So we appreciate it. And this has been this is a fun project. I to see where we where we get and see what comes out of our open house. So. Yeah. All right. Do you have papers from Sharpies? People talk. Sharpies aren't, we're going to have Sharpies, but they're not going to work. So no one can mark anything up. <laughs> yes. Make them think they're going to do it, then it'll disappear. <laughs> uh, any other items? Any other topics to, to discuss? Because, likely, come for our October meeting, we'll probably, we could probably give you guys an update, but we'll just plan on be moving forward with it. And then um, for the October meeting, I'll also, it is to a point that was brought up er earlier, this is the, the upcoming start of the MAG funding cycle. So we'll be looking at any bigger ticket transportation, active transportation type projects. Um, 
looking for I, idea reports. We'll be putting those together and then moving forward. So, cool. So, do we have an Orange City Temple opening house? You know, have we given you a date yet? Yes. But October 27th. So, sure. how is the road going to be? So right now I'm working with the church and they will be shuttling. And there are, I think there's either four or five separate locations. One of them is looking like it'll be at Lakeside Sports Park. That's the one I'm, I'm involved with because we're, uh, we'll be putting together a memorandum of understanding expectations, how much of that parking lot they can use and they keep it clean, their traffic control, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, it'll go from the 27th of October to the 16th of December. And then the dedication, I believe, is mid to late part of January, I think, so. something like that. So yeah, but they're looking at having to shuttle folks there. If you're a volunteer that's going to be working it, you'd be allowed to park on site, but visitors will be shuttled. And I think they're looking to put in a temporary signal right there off of the temple access off of Geneva Road. Kill people. Uh, just for the buses, I think, to allow for that left turn in. They don't want, we really don't want to have that many people because they're looking at, I think there's 570 parking spots and you're, I think they're assuming it's about 45 minutes or so turnaround time once you get there and to have 300 and some odd folks trying to make a left and go in there and get out and yeah it's it's it, it would be a it'd be a nightmare so and I, and we all knew it, it would be during the open house process once it's it's dedicated it should be tempered but then provo's temple is going to be closed so it'll it'll have an uptick but hopefully it's manageable Yeah. Thanks for your time, everyone.